Hi there, so welcome to, uh, this is the second half of lecture 5, or the very end of lecture 5. This is questions 11 and 12. The first one's a simple Mohr's circle, um, and the second one's a find some principal stresses. Um, and they're just sort of having a kick around with, with this sort of stuff, uh, sort of questions. They're, they're not intended to be enormously tricky, but they're just intended to show you how to, how to do these sorts of problems. So question 11 is a pipe. So the first thing you do is you always draw your body. It's a pipe subjected to a hoop stress, uh, so a sigma theta theta of 50 MPa, an axial stress, so a sigma ZZ um, of 60 MPa, and a hoop axial, so that's a uh, on the hoop plane in the axial direction, so it's sort of one of them. Uh, so tall that way, so a sigma uh, theta z of 80 MPa. Okay, so our little element on here, our little element on our surface of our pipe has a, a stress state of 60. 50 and a shear on it of 80 MPa. Okay, and it can't support any uh, stresses in the radial dim dimension because it's a thin pipe. Um, so the stress matrix, if we're being really pernickety about it and writing it down as a 3D stress matrix with our uh, Directions being r theta z is like that. Our theta theta is 50, our z z 60, and our theta z is 80 megapascals. Okay, write down the stress matrix and find the principal stresses and maximum shear stress. And then the next part is at what angle to the axis of the tube is the principal stress found? Finally, write down the hydrostatic stress. Um, well, we can do the finally straight away, actually. So the hydrostatic stress um, is a third of the trace of the matrix, of the tensor. So or the average of these three numbers along the leading diagonal. So it's 110, 50 plus 60 over 3. So that's 36.6 megapascals. Great. OK. Um, find the principal stress matrix. Um, and maximum shear stress. So um, here we go. Um, so uh, let's do a Mohr circle to do the rotation and find the principal stresses. So we'll have a Mohr circle. Um, so we've got uh, 60, 80, and we've got 50, 80. There's my Mohr circle. Bang. Axis is over here. The average here is at 55. That's then 5 and 80. Um, and this is the radius r. And the radius r is therefore the square root of 5 squared plus 80 squared, um, which is 80.16 megapascals, um, which is the maximum shear stress. Um, and what are the principal stresses? Sigma 1 is equal to 55 plus 80.16, which is 135.2 megapascals. Sigma 2 is equal to 55 minus 80.16, which is equal to uh, minus 25.2 megapascals. Um, and uh, um, if I want to find, just check that we've answered the whole question, what's the angle to the axis of the tube that the principal stress is, f that the principal stress axis is found? So if we take the bigger one, so this one, that's our 135, that makes an angle to the 60, which is the ZZ, so that's the axial direction. So the angle here, 2 theta, so the angle 
between the max principal stress and the z axial direction direction is theta and then we can say tan 2 theta is equal to 80 over 5 um, and uh, da -da -da -dum. Uh, so when we work that out that gives us an angle theta of 43.2 degrees um, that is actually we were very close to the maximum shear condition because the two normal stresses were very close to each other so we have to rotate nearly the whole 45 degrees to get to the maximum shear condition um, so that's question 11, that's very nice, and we can move on to question 12. So question 12 asks us to find the principal stresses of this stress matrix, given that one of them is 300. Okay, so what am I going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through by 100. So is equal to 3, 2, naught, 2, naught, 1, naught, 1, 3, if you like, times 10 to the 8 pascals. Okay? And with a lambda 1 is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 pascals. Okay. So then we can form our eigenvalue equation. So we'll have 3 minus lambda times naught minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus 1 squared, that's this guy, minus 2 times that times that minus that times that, so that's 2 into 3 minus lambda minus 1 times naught plus naught times something else that we don't care about because it's naught, but it would be 2 times 1 minus naught times naught, uh, sorry, naught minus lambda minus naught, so yeah, it does matter, but it's multiplied by 0 anyway. So some stuff that looks like that. Um, so then when we multiply this out, we'll have 3 minus lambda. And I'm going to try and keep the factor of 3 minus lambda, because I know that lambda is 3 is a fact, is a solution. So I'll have uh, 3 minus lambda um, uh, No, I'll multiply. I've got a factor of 3 minus lambda there already. So actually what I'll do is I'll say this is minus 3 lambda plus lambda squared plus uh, minus 1. And this then is equal to uh, minus 4 times 3 minus lambda. Great, OK. Um, so that gives me 3 minus lambda. And I'm going to bring this in now. So now I've got lambda squared uh, minus 3 lambda minus 5. OK. Um, so lambda is 3 is clearly a factor, as was stated. So um, therefore, lambda is 3 is a solution. And lambda is equal to, uh, we can then do our minus b over 2a plus minus uh, half the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So I've got um, minus b over 2a, so that's minus 3 over 2, uh, sorry, minus b, plus minus the square root of 9, sorry, half the square root of 9, minus 4 times 5, 4 times minus 5, uh, a is 1. So that's equal to 3 over 2 plus minus a half times the square root of 4 fives are 20, minus minus plus, so that's 29. Um, um, and that gives me 4.19 and minus 1.19. So now I have to multiply back by my 100, so the principal stresses are... So the principal stresses are... Three hundred, four one nine, and minus one one nine megapascals, and that's the solution to uh, question twelve. 
um, very nice. Uh, just have to be able to multiply out and solve a cubic. And you're given one of the solutions, so you can always divide it if you need to. Uh, but if you can preserve the factor, it makes it somewhat easier. And that's it.